Hello everybody, welcome back to War Thunder, and today we're playing in an aircraft that I didn't really like. It is the I-16 Type 18. Now, it's just not its not just this variant of the I-16 that I'm not particularly a fan of. It's all of them, really. I just never really saw the point. Now, make no mistake, these are, as you will see, uh, maybe a bit of a, a deceptive aircraft. Um, I always saw these planes as kind of bad. They're fairly easy to kill and uh, they basically put all their eggs in one basket. They're very light, they're quite nimble, they're very small, but that's kind of all they have going for them. But, as you'll be seeing in this video, they're definitely going to prove me wrong. We have an absolutely stonking game, uh, well, pretty stonking anyway, uh, ready for you today. Now, the I-16, um, kind of Russia's main fighter at the beginning of World War II. Uh, much to some of the pilots' dismay. Early on, it was quite awkward, and the reason you see it with an open open cockpit there is while the original I-16s did have a closed cockpit, a lot of the pilots actually prefer, preferred just to leave it open because they didn't really feel safe flying it. And so the later variants uh, just did away with the closed cockpit all right, altogether. So, uh, yeah, that doesn't really fill you with confidence. Now the I-16, like I said, it's very light, it's very nimble, but it doesn't really feel very nimble some of the times. It feels quite floaty, and not quite as tight as you'd like it to. And, you know, especially some of the later ones, which are like 2.7 in battle rating, it's like, you know what else you could be flying at 2.7? Yeah, I'd rather not be flying this one. But this one is at 2.3, it's one of the, towards the end, one of the last variants of the I-16. Now, as I said, this is Russia's or, or one of Russia's main fighters at the start of World War II. Um, but let's just say if I was a, a Russian pilot during Operation Barbarossa and I was going up against BF-109Fs, I would not be feeling too confident. So, yeah. Um, it's a bit of a mixed bag, this aircraft. Um, they did have some success in real life, but that's definitely down to the skill of the pilot, not the plane actually being very solid. Now, positive attributes, other than the fairly floaty turn time of this aircraft, it does have the four 7.62mm Chukasse machine guns, which are extremely effective. They're more like miniguns. In fact, they're more like miniguns than the actual miniguns in this game, as you could hear when I was shooting down that uh, Stuka. These things have a crazy high rate of fire, and um, they like to set things on fire as well. And we're going to be doing that a lot this game. We're going to pick out our second victim. It is the BF-109 E3. And there you go. Looks like that's uh, that was actually an assist, I think. Or was that a kill? No, that was a kill. I got an assist on the uh, Stuka. Now, another interesting thing about this game is this is the Poland map. You don't see it too often. Um... And it's the air version of the Poland map, and I say that because down there, right by that lake, that is the ground map of the Poland map. As I pick up another kill on another BF-109. So yeah, that's kind of a cool little thing just to notice, like, oh my god, that's the ground map. Pretty cool. Now, KO-27, that is a very dangerous aircraft, one of the best turn fighting vehicles in the whole game. Unfortunately, however, being Japanese, it doesn't exactly take fires too well. And, well, there's kill number three. KR-27 is another aircraft that's horribly over-tiered. It's something like 2.0 in battle racing. And, well, yeah, it doesn't really work too well. But here you can see the good agility we're easily able to get on that BF-109's tail. Sure, they are carrying a bomb, but it's uh, definitely a case of weight here. And that cheeky guy managed to actually hit me a little bit, as you can see, with his bomb. Looks like it wasn't totally useless after all. But it wasn't enough to save them. Four kills, one assist. Will this Hawk 75 be our fifth kill? Yes, it will. There you go. Polycarpov Ace. Now, as this is a fairly low-tier game, you're going to see over the course of this game, our team just you know, randomly crashing and disappearing over the course of time. Uh, take that uh, P-400 way in the distance there. He is chasing down a J-1N1, fair enough. And he's going to be chasing them down for some time, to be honest. So, uh, while we wait for him to uh, do his stuff, 
uh, we're going to begin travelling back to base. I think we are quite low on fuel. The default load is only like 11 minutes, which is not a lot. And we're low on ammo as well. And we may as well get this plane repaired because we're currently missing a flap. So while that's happening, the F... I was going to say the F4F Wildcat. That is another plane that is at 2.3, and it's a plane I'd much rather be flying. This thing's just... Well, I mean, as you saw, it's good. I mean, you can do miracles with this thing. But it just doesn't feel... It's not my kind of plane. Obviously, it's not the best-looking aircraft. I think it's kind of cute. It's got its charms, but it's not exactly a good-looking plane with that stubby old nose. And it's... Obviously, look at the size of the, the pilot there. It's a tiny little thing, which is probably its best advantage. You're just a, such a small target. But... I don't know. I guess I'd always kind of thrown some shade towards this plane. And to be honest, I don't think it deserved it all the time. So maybe my opinion on this aircraft has changed, but I'd still hesitate to fly it over something else. Obviously, the lack of speed, our top speed is like 280 miles an hour, which is significantly slower than a lot of other aircraft at this tier. Like that P400, who has now finally killed the J1N1. So, we're coming up on the airfield. Let's see if we can uh, perform a rather neat landing. And yes, showing off very nearly goes badly. Thank goodness the trees on this uh, in this game are a little bit funky with their hitboxes. So, I hope that, uh, well, the gameplay so far, I hope that convinced you that this is actually not a bad aircraft. Which is good, because a lot of people will end up picking these up as they're fairly low tier, and, you know, Russia's quite a popular nation. So for newcomers, you know, just be cautious. Just, you know, hang back near the back of the pack. Dive into the battle once it's already begun. It's kind of true for most aircraft, but you don't really want to be leading the charge. Uh, perhaps more so in this aircraft than any other, because this thing does not take punishment well. It is mostly wood, and wood is not exactly known for its strength and ability to withstand fires. Another interesting thing here is you can see I am actually using my landing flaps which is probably not a good idea, I would not recommend it as we only have one and using one flap you may as well just not bother with flaps at all. So I'm surprised that didn't break our wheels off but okay. Looked like it, I was going to say looking like a good landing so far but uh, yeah. Okay, maybe not. So Successful mission, five kills, one assist. We are officially a Polycarpov ace. So that is a good start, but there are still two aircraft on the enemy team. We have an A-29, which is uh, currently unknown, apparently. Oh, there they are. Um, they've got their wheels out for some reason. Uh, basically a Chinese Hudson. And we have a Focke Wolf Condor, which is just a very big German bomber, which is not actually very good, mind you. But back to us, how are we doing? Uh, we're probably repaired and ready to go. Yes, we're going to rearm. Um, and we're going to bring rockets because there are some ground targets. And I was kind of thinking, you never know. Um, I might be able to fire some rockets at an aircraft while they're on the base. So, let's get taken off and ready for round two. So, we're back in action. We are fully repaired, fully rearmed, max fuel, well... We've been we've refueled the minimum fuel load, yes, um, and we have six rockets. Unfortunately, I don't know if it's just me, but I really do not get along with Russian rockets very well. It feels like Ru uh, rockets in general just seem to be getting nerfed or just feel less effective nowadays, especially in air realistic battles. Um, these things, I mean, it is only a small aircraft, so I'm not surprised it can't carry a big load, but it, they feel very ineffective. You fire them at a tank, they'll probably do nothing. But there are pillboxes, and pillboxes are quite easy to kill. At least light pillboxes are. So a direct hit from most rockets in the game, and I'm not sure why the engine audio just kind of cut out there, but a direct hit from most rockets in the game will uh, be fatal to a pillbox. So why, oh why, was that direct hit? It, it didn't do anything. If only I'd known that 7mm machine guns were so effective against pillboxes, then uh, I probably would have done that from the get-go. 
Now there is only one guy left on the enemy team. It is a Focke Wolf Condor. And it looks like the engine audio has finally decided to come back. Unfortunately, however, well, you'll see. Now, the Condor is actually currently taking off, as you can uh, probably tell. Well, quite literally, is taking off. Unfortunately, he is a little bit too close for to the airfield for me to get involved. And while I am hovering around up here, waiting for them to get out of the range of the AA, which is trying to shoot at me now, I can see, you can see him there, I'm trying to hover my mouse on him. Uh, our teammates are going to town on the light pillboxes that are still alive. Probably the good move, you know, there's only one guy left, you may as well go after the ground targets if someone's already committed. Unfortunately, the Wildcat, who was destroying the enemy pillboxes, uh, basically depleted the enemy team's tickets, so the game ended before I was able to get a sixth kill. But still, it showcased the Polycarpov's good strengths. So let's quickly run them down. You have an actually surprisingly good rate of climb. I assume that's because it's so light, because it's basically nothing with a big engine. Uh, actually, how big of an engine is it? It's not even that big, um, but it's big enough to make it fast-ish. Unfortunately, the top speed is not great. The turn time feels a bit deceptive. It feels a bit longer than that, but um, it feels a bit floaty, like I said, and obviously this thing is very, very poorly defended. Um, no armor. Well, there's that, but <laughs> that's not really going to protect much. Um, so yeah, speed uh, is not your strength. Size, however, is. I mean, you compare this to an I-15. The I-15 is actually bigger in some ways. Compare it to an IL-2, and yeah, it's like half the size. So use that to your advantage. You can be quite a small target to hit. Be fairly reserved. Go in once the enemy is distracted with someone else. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope this was useful. I hope this maybe shone some light on an aircraft which uh, at least I didn't really think much of beforehand. And if you did like that video, do hit the like button, comment down below, subscribe for more, check out the Patreon, and tune into the live stream uh, later today at 5 p.m. So uh, hopefully it will go a bit better than last time. Hopefully I'll remember to turn the mic on. Um, so yeah. I'll catch you in the next one.